All right, today we are talking about favorite coffees of the year. I'd be really curious what you guys think, but here are my three favorite coffees. We're gonna go over a overall, best overall coffee that I really enjoyed. We'll then go over a fun coffee, you know, more processed illegal coffees. What do I think is really great there? And then we'll go over a decaf or kind of a half calf here. So my favorite overall coffee of this entire year was this guy here. Uh, the Say Coffee Lamastis Family Alita State Washed Coffee. I spent lots of money to fly here just to buy these coffees here. So we have both of the Lamastis Family Panama Geshas Alita Estate. We have the washed and we have the natural. Am I the first person to get them? You are. <laughs> I am the first person to get them. You yes. are the very first person yeah. actually. Because I showed up on the doorstep to yeah. buy them. That's true. <laughs> a, a few weeks ahead of it regular release time in the cafe, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, well, really excited to try these coffees. This was actually the most expensive coffee that I had ever purchased. Uh, this was uh, 60 bucks for 125 grams. It's a, it's a lot of money for this coffee, but to me it was so well worth it. And what I did was I took this coffee, both of these coffees, the, the natural and the washed, I took it to the Bay Area community. I took it to, to my guys, right? And I let them all taste this coffee and we, really, really enjoyed this. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I sniffed it over there, like when the P100 yeah. was purging, it's like purging in my yeah. nose, like whoa. <laughs> that is to say like fruity. Super fruity. Super fruity, yeah. Uh, all the dominant notes being floral makes sense because this tastes like flowers, mm -hmm. like, pretty much. I, I like that with this, the flowers, while there are a lot of florals in this, it's not like the only thing going on. Oh yeah, There's I mean the like, first thing I noticed was acidity yeah. like, in my mouth, just the perceived acidity was like, not high, but noticeable. But now drinking it and smelling it, it's just like, boom, all florals. Mm -hmm. Especially now once I've kind of gotten used to the acidity. Yeah. You know, the first couple of sips, I was just trying to process what was going on mm -hmm. in this yeah. cup, because it's so different actually. Right. It's so, very different from a typical washed coffee. Mm -hmm. that especially a say washed coffee or a Kenyan where it's way fruit dominant. Yeah. like. I just like that there's still so much balance in the usually you're like, you know, one is it's more floral dominant, more acidity or sweetness yeah. or something more dominant. But like, yeah, yeah. this is like, everything seems to be equally structured, equally complex, just like really turned up out of every, like really. <laughs> yeah, it's like everything's at a really, nine. Really, right? everything's <laughs> at a nine. I think with, the florals are like a 10. Yeah, I think there's a little <laughs> more florals here. I mean, it's a Gesha. It's crazy. Uh, Talkers. <laughs> <laughs> it really does taste like black tea. Yeah. Black tea. Thank you. Wow, yeah, that's really sweet. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it totally opened up since the last time we brewed it for a little bit more. Honeysuckle. Honeysuckle, yeah. Yeah, because I would have called it plum. Plum, yeah. I think these more expensive coffees taste a little bit better or they're more fun when you share them with people. But pretty much to me, this coffee was such a perfect presentation of what a wash coffee could be incredibly complex, incredibly clean, beautiful, beautiful acidity presentation. And it just really, really held up as it cooled down. Honestly, it tastes, tastes way better, closer to room temperature. I also want to mention that I tasted this coffee uh, brewed by this guy, Doug. Doug, if you're watching, thank you so much, where he presented such an interesting, different method of brewing this to, to what I, I do. I usually kind of just do the normal, say, shop recipe, just put the coffee in the AeroPress, do that long steep, although I do do agitation and all of that because I'm not a coffee shop. He brewed it with the mellow drip, pushed this to one to 18 large ratio. It was a very harmonious brew, high extraction yield, like this 27, 28% extraction yield type of stuff. And my palate is honestly not that accustomed to those levels of extraction, especially at that large ratio, because I feel like you really kind of compromise on the body and enjoyability of the cup. But this coffee at that ratio really, really stood up where we were able to get beautiful acidity, beautiful florals, beautiful everything, all mashed up together in every single sip. Whereas my typical brewing method is just much more, I would say acidity forward or floral forward or body forward, right? Like one note is much more present. On my palate, I never tasted that and I, I had the opportunity to taste that. So I thought that was a fun story. I know there are some of you guys who bought two pounds of this stuff and you're still hoarding it. If you still have some of it, let me know. I'll buy some of it off of you. But this was super, super tasty. All right, so we talked about our beautiful wash coffee. Let's go to the polar opposite. What is our crazy coffee? And there were some really great options this year for crazy coffees. And I am going to be kind of picking from our good friends at Manhattan here. So 
For many of you guys, guess I've probably had these coffees. So we have uh, Diego Bermudez and Letty Bermudez, both from Diego Bermudez. Uh, his entire family has coffees in Manhattan. This was kind of my favorite fun coffee. This Letty Bermudez here, which I think is a very interesting coffee to talk about because it is absolutely wild. Haribo peach, milky oolong, mango. Uh, yeah, you actually are probably gonna be tasting this in this coffee. And um, like, this was such a fun coffee to brew. And the reason why I really enjoyed this coffee is because this is the coffee you give to people who just don't realize that coffee can be absolutely insane. I think to a lot of people, they, they'll drink this, they'll be like, am I even, what am I drinking? Am I drinking sugar? Am I drinking, like, is this even real coffee? And I say this as someone who has served this coffee to a variety of people who don't do this crazy coffee stuff. And they all quite enjoy this. And this is a very tea-like coffee. Uh, obviously it depends on how you brew it, but I would just really say it's super, super sweet. Uh, and you can definitely get some acidity to come out. You can get some peaches, right? But like Haribo peach is real. It is very processed. It does taste fermenty, not ultra, ultra clean. There are things that are getting covered up, but it's okay because it's so enjoyable to drink. I also really, really enjoy this on espresso pushing slightly faster flow rates where I can get this mango to really pop out. But just generally speaking, Diego coffees to me, at least from Manhattan, have kind of this really complex layering to them. Uh, it's definitely like whatever fruit note that they tell you about, rounded, very, very sweet. I mean, I've recently been enjoying this almost every week at a local coffee shop called The Coffee Movement where they serve this and they have theirs dialed in, I feel like much more towards uh, sweetness and they're serving this stuff to normal people. We're seeing normal people ordering this stuff and they're really enjoying this. Like uh, whenever I go, I, I always order a Letty and it's so fun to drink. And whenever I bring friends to the shop and you know they come over, I always try to have some Letty on hand because it's just, really, really cool to show people that coffee can actually taste very interesting. There are lots of opinions on processing, especially like, what does double fermentation, thermal shock, gesha even mean? Like, what do these words mean, right? What is Diego actually doing to his coffees, right? These are types of things that we'll probably discuss at a later date. But the point is, is like, I think this is a very great introduction of just what can coffee actually be to a lot of different people? And it, you don't need the world's best palate to taste this, you know, versus something like these very, very complex wash coffees uh, where there can be so much going on that it's very difficult to pick things out. You know, I would say with some of these very fun, naturally processed, crazy coffees or fermented coffees or carbonic maceration coffees, Oftentimes, you'll probably be able to get a normal person to be able to taste those flavor notes, unless you absolutely botch the brew. But I also, you know, these coffees are pretty forgiving, not gonna lie. But yeah, this has been my other favorite coffee of the year. This guy here. So this was uh, the coffee that to me really, really stood out. So this is Hatches Racing Into the Night, which also is a Diego Bermudez coffee, right? We, I've, I've been drinking a lot of Diego, guys. Like, it is good stuff. I really enjoy Diego, but pretty much uh, this is my pick for this, like, decaf coffee. So recently, Hatch or Roaster from Canada, really great guys. Uh, Boris, if you're watching this, hello. They dropped some crazy, crazy coffees. And this is a blend of three different coffees. So we have, I don't even know what this means. This is a half-calf coffee, so Eco Enigma, lychee and anaerobic decaf El Prezo, Diego Bermudez. And the flavor notes are floral, strawberry, peach, and honey. This coffee to me is, is kind of like a baby version of this coffee, of the normal Manhattan Diego Bermudez. It is actually super similar in terms of the red fruit presentation, as well as in the finish, you often will get like a lychee uh, that you can get in this guy, but you get, I would say more florals. And I think it's because of kind of the decaf part of the coffee. Also to mention, this is something that I've been really enjoying is actually some of these Diego Bermudez coffees that are decaffeinated. So Hatch has uh, had some of them uh, recently from El Preso and they are actually really good where a lot of these coffees, because they are so heavily processed, it often actually covers up the decaf process taste that you might be so used to. Of course, you get this like kind of layering effect that you get from Diego's coffees, uh, but I actually think that makes drinking decaf coffee very enjoyable. So it's kind of 
awesome with this coffee. Like you can be drinking this pretty late into the night and you can race into the night. It's super enjoyable to be able to drink very dynamic and crazy and interesting and really fun coffees that are also decaffeinated that, you know, don't make you go crazy because you're drinking too much of them. Uh, so for me, this has been this other pick where I, I really, really enjoy this. And, you know, I would probably say like this and the regular Diego Bermudez are, are very, very strong coffees, uh, very fun coffees to enjoy, and they can be pushed in a variety of ways. I can drink so much of this throughout the day, I can drink a lot of this throughout the day. So anyway, yeah, those are my favorite coffees of the year, these guys here. So say La Masters Family Elitist, they washed Manhattan Coffee Roasters, Lady Bermudez, and then Hatches Racing Into the Night. Uh, just a fantastic lineup. Those are my favorite. Uh, I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this. I know for some of you folks, this, this Alita Estate is definitely up there. And then I know many of you guys really enjoy Letty. Uh, I, I think this might've surprised some of you guys for me to actually pick something like Letty to be in my favorites. It's fun to talk about this stuff, but uh, I really want to dive deeper at a later date into these processing methods, talking a bit about green coffee. And I want to get these industry experts, people that I really, really respect to be on camera with me to talk about these uh, coffees, because I, I just think it's interesting. And I would really like to share those types of stories. And also, if you were interested in seeing more of these videos where you actually like brew and taste coffees, I actually would highly recommend you check out Coffee Reviews. Julian, that guy is insanely consistent and he also drinks a lot of the same coffees uh, that I drink and we often actually have very similar coffees at times. At least I'm seeing it when he's releasing the reviews. I'm like, hey, I actually have that exact same coffee. This year, I really wanted to cover things like these, these advent calendars, like I have three advent calendars just sitting here. I hadn't had, I haven't even had a chance to like drink those yet, uh, let alone make an entire tasting video on them. So, you know, I, I really wish I could make that type of content, but due to my personal time capacity constraints of what I can dedicate to this, you know, I'm just, I, I can't do that. But if you are interested in hearing about more opinions on coffee, like, let me know, right? I really want to share kind of more perspectives about coffee. I think that's going to be very, very fun and informative to some folks. Uh, but anyway, I will probably do this again, 2023, and we'll probably add some more categories of like, what was the best dark roast coffee? What was the best blend? What was, you know, the best like weirdly processed coffee? I mean, we already have a pro weird, weirdly processed coffee, but like maybe like even crazier co processed coffee. Um, so those are the types of things that I probably will have time to do next year. Uh, but I wanted to see how this video did and if you guys cared about this type of stuff. Because if you guys care about the stuff, let me know because I love talking about coffee. I mostly actually discuss my opinions on coffee in this thread called Beans Addicts Non-Anonymous in the Espresso Fishing Notice Discord. So if you wanna actually like text chat with me about coffee, that's where uh, I do that the most. But I you know, kind of wanted to summarize all of the things that I normally say in there in a very large video, just kind of covering the three coffees that I really enjoyed. So anyway, that's all I wanted to say today. If you have any questions, let me know, but otherwise I'll see you guys around and happy new year.